Greetings, YouTube. This is the Magnum Boker, Boker Magnum Slicer. And it came in this very attractive, uh, or Magnum by Boker, sorry. Very attractive tin. I was really quite impressed. I wasn't expecting that. It came with a sleeve on top of this. The sleeve's been recycled already. And you open it up, and it came with um, some literature um, and with uh, a wrench that allows you to make adjustments to um, your uh, thumb stud and to the scales and the, uh, the the clip. It's not the right size for the, uh, pardon me, uh, it's not the right size for the pivot. So here you go. Now I purchased this because I knew it was a copy of a ZT design and I recently actually encountered the, DZ, DZ, the ZT zero tolerance design. This is a copy of, which is a knife I can't afford, but I happen to really like this shape. Um, this has contour G10 scales. The ZT design has carbon fiber, I believe. Um, star drive uh, fasteners all around. Single position uh, clip, which is to my mind something we shouldn't see in the 21st century, even on at least less expensive knife. There's no reason you couldn't have put the same holes on this side so that you give a right, a left-handed people a little break there, but they didn't. So um, the clip is kind of shiny for my taste. I think it kind of, you see how shiny it is? I think that draws attention to the fact you have a knife in your pocket. And I like to downplay that. I prefer a, a clip that's a, a matte or, or, or you know, a, a satin finish. It's a thick, strong clip. I mean, this has got some real heft to it. I was, I was got to tell you, for an inexpensive knife, I was like, wow, that's a, that's a really nice clip as far as the strength is concerned. It goes onto your pocket well. It works admirably. Um, there is no a lanyard hold on this, so deploying is going to be a little slower sometimes, you know, but you can get in there your thumb and get your fingers in there and grab a hook on those and pull it out. So let's get down to the main, main reason I like this blade. Look at that shape. That is a modified Warncliffe. And that is just pretty. Um, it came out of the box with an adequate edge. I have not done anything to it. Um, you have a hollow grind with a secondary bevel. Um, this is flat section in here. There is no swed. There's no swedge here, but there's a little one here where you get to the tip, like the last inch. There's a little swedge in there, which is kind of a nice touch. Um, gives it a lightens it up visually a little. Um, it also would make it a little easier for penetration um, if you need to go forward into something. It has some jimping here, um, no jimping on the on the lock. You have open pillar construction when they use straight pillars. The liners uh, here are are quite hefty. The scales are quite hefty, and I got to tell you, overall, this knife it's a budget knife. I paid thirty two dollars for that for this total. I think this feels really hefty. It's not overly heavy, but it feels like it's built like a tank. You hold this in your hand and it feel it really fills your fills your palm up. Uh, maybe a little too much for me because my again my hands aren't huge. If I had a, access to a mill, I might shave off half a mill off of both of those scales. Just narrow that up just a little bit. And I think that overall would, would, would be a little more comfortable for me. But for a person with average size hands, that's not going to be a problem. Nice deep choil in here. And again, and, um, it's very comfortable. And again, you, it just it feels like it locks into your hand. When you close your fist on that or you hold it like this, it really feels like it, your hand locks right in there. And that's a comfortable, uh, secure feeling. And I really appreciate that. Um, dual, obviously, dual thumb studs with the here, if you would like to remove it for some strange reason, because without it, you can't open the knife. Um, but all is not perfect. I can deal with the fact that it isn't razor sharp or shaving sharp. I can fix that. Um, it's yeah, I can deal with the fact that it's just generic 440 stainless against a budget knife, and it's a ripoff of a ZT design. I can deal with that too. The part I can't deal with it is this pivot. This has a really stiff pivot. I mean, it gives you a nice smooth, nice smooth um, motion there, but I can't really pop this because it is so tight. So you might be asking, Tetsubo, why do you not just loosen that? Excellent question, viewers. So I have a set of star drive screwdrivers. I couldn't turn this, but I also have a set of star drive bits. So I got my bits out and I put one of the bits into uh, 
a vice pair of vice grips and I held it at a 90 degree. So here's the vice grips and I put the bit like this. That way I could put the bit in there, hold it in place and get a little bit of torque on it. Just a little bit of torque so I could loosen this up. Guess what I couldn't do? I couldn't loosen this up. Uh, and I did succeed to get the blade a little more in the middle. It's not perfectly centered. And that's, again, it's okay. It's a, it's a, it's a budget knife. I'll, I can deal with that. It's not touching, so that's all right. Um, but I could not get that. So I tried on this side, I couldn't get it. I tried back on this side. And the process of trying to get to loosen this thing up, I snapped my bit in half. So now I no longer have the bit that size in my bit collection, which was eh, slightly angering, I'll freely admit. So I can't pop this comfortably. Now, if I really, really try, see it's, there we go. It takes a lot of effort. And the problem is when I do that, the lock engages so firmly and it, it really takes a huge amount of effort to to, uh, to close it. In fact, I popped it once when I really put some effort behind it and it got so tight, I couldn't unlock it with my thumb. I had to go in there with my other hand and use my fingernail to push it off. So to my mind, that is a problem. Um, it is ever so slightly larger than I like. If this was like 10 to 15% small, smaller and all, I mean the whole scale, I'd be happier. Um, it's a little too heavier for me and a little too thick. Again, I, that's a, that could be fixed if I had access to a mill, but I don't. Um, but that is the deal breaker for me. I'm not carrying this knife because I cannot get this thing adjusted so that I can open this the way I want to open it, which is the ability to pop it open with my thumb. Because if you have a nice action and you can pop it open with your thumb, the blade becomes as fast as any assisted opening knife you are ever going to see. As fast as automatic knives if you have it well adjusted. As uh, as one thing I, I can't quite grasp, I don't know what this notch is for. The blade passes through it, so it has to, there, the, so you couldn't put a lanyard there or anything. The blade would cut it, you know, would cut right through it. I can't think what that notch is for. I, an aesthetic design decision from some variety, and I, I'm, I'm not sure what it is. It doesn't hurt, it's not painful. It doesn't cause any issues or, you know, at all. Um, as one on the side, there's no sharp edges on this, but they're very, very crisp. And when this is in your pocket and you're sliding your hand in and out of the pocket, that crisp edge really makes you think you might cut yourself. You're not going to. It's not that sharp. But I would probably maybe just take, if I had, if I were going to want to recondition this and I had access to a tumbler, take the clip and the liners and tumble the crap out of them. Something else I would do, okay, I went to flip it and I, this is not a flipper, um, I would probably mill out, skeletonize the liners. And there's a hole in one of these liners. I'm not sure what the hole does, or why it's there, maybe for the machining process. But I would take a drill of the same diameter, so it keep a little consistency, and drill out some more of this so that these these liners weren't as heavy. Um, it's not going to affect your integrity as far as strength is concerned. It would make a little bit lighter, which is nice. And overall, that's that, I guess that's my main my, my main critique, the pivot and the weight. Um, I like a slightly less large knife, but if you like ZT knives and cannot afford the model, this is a, a version thereof. And I forget the model. I just saw it yesterday too. Uh, Knifeworks.com, I think. Um, this is maybe something you want to look into, or maybe you can get this. Play with it. See if you really like the design before you make the investment in that ZT, which is going to be in the $300 range. You know what I mean? Um, decide, do I really like this design enough to invest that much in a knife? Um, and the other one has carbon fiber scales, which are going to be a little, could possibly be too, a little slick because carbon fiber is like that sometimes, but much, much lighter. So that is going to be a thinner, lighter knife, um, but the exact same shape as far as the handle is concerned. Um, but if you like contour G10 and you like a, a blade that's a little on the hefty side, medium size, not too big, not too small, the uh, Magnum Boker Slicer may be something that you really want to look at.